Today on The Joy of Editing, this is a TK Special Edition, and I want to show you a hidden feature found in the TK9 Multimass Panel. It's one of my favorites. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. This is a TK Special Edition. I want to show you something on the Multimass Panel. This is a new button right here, but this is not the hidden feature I want to tell you about. There is a hidden feature that goes along with this button, and I'm really excited about it, and I hope I got your curiosity piqued. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can use my promo code DK15, which normally gives you 15% off, but now through the end of August 31st, 2023, that DK15 will get you 25% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. I highly recommend that you pick up Sean's new button by button training video. It goes over TK9 in great detail, button by button. Lots of great information. I highly recommend it. When you use my promo code DK15, you're helping to support the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. When you use that code, I do make a small commission, and this helps me to keep these videos coming to you each and every week. And thank you all out there for using my promo code DK15. Thank you very much. Before I show you that hidden feature that deals with this button on the TK9 multi-mass panel, let me show you something. About a year ago, I made a video and I called it Create Realistic Bokeh Effects Using Photoshop Lens Blur Filter with Depth Map. And I also included a special action that you could use, but I made a video, but now it's so much simpler to do with the new TK9 Multimass Panel. I no longer use my action, but now I'm using the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, the Multimass Panel. And I have two examples for you today, this image and this image here. And what I want to do in each one of these images is blur that background out a little bit more just to give me a little more shallow depth of field. And that's something I love to do with my images when I'm working in Photoshop, especially portraits or flower shots and things of that nature. But this new button on the TK9 multi-mask panel is for creating a focus mask. In other words, if you just wanted to find the area that's in focus, you would click this button and it's set up for auto and Photoshop runs its auto algorithm or whatever it does to find what's in focus here. And you can see it missed this whole area right here, but you can subtract or add, see these brushes here. So I could come here and just say, subtract that area out and maybe click on this and this. And this is the area in focus. Then I could come and get this plus brush and make it a little smaller and just click right here and it'll put that eyebrow back because that should be in focus as well. And then you could use this mask to just target the subject or whatever you want to do. Like you would click OK. I'll just show you what happens here. And it makes a mask of the subject basically, OK? But it's only looking for areas that are in focus. So then you can make adjustments on those particular areas. But this tutorial is not about that. I'm just going to go ahead and X out of here for now because I'm going to show you the hidden feature. I'll save that for another tutorial. Now, here's a tip for you. If you ever want to see what these buttons do, you can get tool tips. If you hold your option or all key down and hover over a button, like I hovered over that focus mask button, you can see we can get some tool tips here. The first tool tip deals with the focus mask. The second tool tip deals with the special hidden feature that I want to show you today to make a depth map and we can blur out our background. So here's what we do here. On Windows, hold your control key down. On a Mac, hold your command key down. And then you'll click on that focus mask button, okay? But here's a note here. Depth map function might not work on non-English versions of Photoshop. So I'm not sure if it'll work on all versions of Photoshop. English versions, it should work on all of those. But on non-English versions, you'll just have to try it. I'm not 100% sure. But to get out of tooltips, we can just click X. Now, those tooltips will stay up until you click the X. Well, let's give this a try. Let me click on my first image. I'm going to start out with this image. And basically, what I want to do is add a little bit more softness, out of focus look to that background. I think it'll look really nice. So here's what I'm going to do. Remember, Command or Control click on the Focus Mask button. When you do, here's what's going to happen. You have to wait a few seconds. It's going to create a depth map. Now, this depth map, the darker areas are the areas closer to the camera. 
the lighter areas are the areas furthest away. Now you'll notice here, we have brushes here. And these brushes are used to correct the depth map. Sometimes Photoshop doesn't get it quite right. And you could use these brushes to paint on here to fix things up if you need to. So it's nice to have those there. So we have the brushes and we have this button here. We can see the actual image itself. So we could take a look and see if the depth map looks right. You can also, is here's a little tip. You can also take this opacity of this depth map layer and pull this back just to make sure like you can see the depth map here sort of, and you can see if it's getting everything right, if it's not missing anything. And then just remember to pull it the whole way back up when you're done because you want to have that black and white image there. But that represents the depth of the image. Now, once you've created the depth map, you'll have three different options. We can um, save as a channel and open lens blur filter, which is the one I generally always use. But sometimes you just want to save a depth map for whatever reason. You can click this button right here, save as channel only. So then you could use that channel for other Photoshop editing purposes. Maybe the areas that are closer to you, you may want to lighten up or something like that. So you could use a depth map for different reasons. And I will use a depth map on both of these images to make adjustments too, just to show you that we can do that. Or if you decide you don't want to do anything, just click delete and cancel. But in our case, I want to blur that background. So I'll click on save as channel and open the lens blur filter by clicking this button. And this takes us into the lens blur filter. Now this filter is easy to work with. You'll notice we have a bunch of different sliders that we can work with. Like the main one is radius. This is the one for the blurring. Then there's blade curvature and rotation and specular highlights. These deal with the specular highlights back in here. You can create like specular highlights, make these areas lighter and and you can make them the shape of the diaphragm of your lens and things like that. I don't usually do that, so I'm not going to get into that right now. But I'm just going to blur the background. And then we have some noise down here. And this noise is important because this background gets blurry. And sometimes if there's no noise in there, it kind of doesn't look right. And sometimes you can get banding issues. So I recommend always a little bit of noise. And this default setting of one is probably ideal for most images. If you have an image that's super noisy, you can add more noise. And, and you have two different types of uh, distribution here, Gaussian noise or uniform noise. I generally like the uniform noise, so I'm going to click on uniform. But both of them work pretty well, but you could try out different ones and see what you like. But now, see this slider right here, blur focal distance? I generally don't use this because what I like to do is see my cursor right now, this sets the focal point. Whenever this is kind of dark looking, see if I click it, it becomes light and you just see a regular cursor here. But if I click it, it kind of gets a little darker and then you can see how this cursor looks different here. So basically what this means is if I click on the background, it'll make the foreground go out of focus. But if I click on the foreground, say the horse's eye right here, now I know I got that horse in focus, but look how beautiful that background looks. Isn't that cool? So basically, I use the set focal point. That's the main tool I use here. And then secondly, I'll use the radius. So if you want less of a blur, we can click to the left here and you'll notice we'll have less blur. Or if we click over to the right, we can get tons of blur in here if we need it. But I don't like it to look fake. So I'll make it look pretty natural. So maybe somewhere right around here gives me nice blur. Now you also have a preview here. You can click this, uncheck it, and you can see the before and there's the after, but you know, it's just that simple. And also for noise, I always check on monochromatic noise. I just like the noise I get better with monochromatic. If you uncheck it, you'll get chroma noise. So there'll be a little bit of color noise in there as well, but I like to keep this on monochromatic, but it's just that simple. Basically use this cursor to set the focal point. Just click on the area you want in focus and then adjust your radius to the amount of out of focus area you want and then just click OK and that sends us right back into Photoshop and here's my before and here's my after. Isn't that cool? Now you'll notice we have a depth map saved down here in channels and I'll show you how we can use that. I'm going to go ahead and grab a color grading tool so I'm going to click this button right here to get my color grading tool right there and now I'll use the new mask calculator found in the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. Here it is in the combo panel right here. So I'll just click this, 
and I'll click on my depth map. This shows you any channels you have saved down in channels, and I have a depth map, so I'll click on that, and then I'll just click this button to output it to the layer mask right here. So I'll click this, and there you can see there's that depth map. And now check this out. What I want to do, the light areas are going to get the adjustment, right? So I'll click on the midtones, and what I want to do is just darken that background down a little bit. So just like so. I'm just going to take that midtone and drag that back to somewhere right around there. And then I can color grade it, maybe warm it up a little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit towards yellowish green, say maybe like right up about there. Maybe that's too much. Maybe right about there. So check it out. Here's the before and here's the after. Just darkening the background. Just down from here down into this area here. So it's pretty cool. So here's my overall before. And now here is the after. So quite a nice improvement, I think. Now let's do the final image. Let's click on this one and let's see how fast we can do this. Let me X out of the color grading tool. I'm going to command or control click on the focus mask button and wait a couple seconds here and a depth map will be created. There it is right there. I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to save it as a channel and open up the lens blur filter just like this and give it a second. There it is. And Again, with the set focal point, this comes up by default. I'm just going to click on her eye right here, make sure I have her in focus. And let's blur that background out a little bit more. Here's my radius right here at 50. Let me take it up to about here, give it a second or two, just to add that little extra blur. I can even go a little stronger on this one, I think, to maybe somewhere right around there. And again, I'm just using that... Uh, noise amount of one and I'm going to click on uniform and I have it set for monochromatic. Maybe I'll just pull this back just a little bit. Maybe I'm going a little too strong there. I always want to overdo it sometimes. But there it is right there. I think that's good and I'm just going to click OK. That sends us back in Photoshop. Now here's the before and here is the after. So it just takes that out of focus a little bit more. And now let's grab another color grading tool. So I'll grab the color grading tool and let's click on the uh, mask calculator on the combo panel. You also find that on the CX panel right here. And I'll click on depth map. And this time, do I want to darken it? Well, we can make choices here. But I chose depth map, but I got to apply it to this layer by clicking this button right here. And now let's click on midtones. And yeah, I think I do want to darken it. Let's just darken it up a little bit, like somewhere right about here. And it's really warm back there, so maybe let's offset that warmth by giving it a little bit of cool color grade. So I'll take this uh, to right around here. Let's try that. We can even go stronger if we need to. Maybe not that strong. Maybe something like that. Now here's my before the color grading, and here's after. And now let's look at the overall before and after. So let's use our handy before after button on the combo panel. You'll find it here in the CX panel. But here's the overall before. And here is after, but now we're isolating our model. She's really front and center in the image here. And I like the extra blur in the background and the little darker background looks so much nicer. But there you go. Let me X out the color grading tools. So don't forget, here's our hidden feature. Command or control click this button right here and you can create a depth map and get some really cool bokeh effects in your images and try it in all types of different images. You never know what you're going to get. It pays to experiment. It pays to play and to have a little bit of fun. That's all part of the joy of editing. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you give this a try. Hey, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Hey, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification and click all notifications. That way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time, but until then happy editing.